Tonight on the TTRPG Flip Through, we are going to talk about Return to Dark Tower Fantasy Roleplaying. This is a hidden gem of a book uh, and of a game made by Ninth Level Games. Thank you to Ninth Level Games for providing me with this copy. And this is compatible with uh, the Mazes Roleplaying System or the Mazes Roleplaying Game. So if you don't have Mazes or you don't know what that is, you can check out that. Uh, flip through on this channel as well. This is also, these are both done by Chris O'Neill, uh, the designer, and this is fully compatible with mazes, but it's an interesting take on it. I'll start off by saying it's curious that uh, this hasn't gotten more attention. I'll talk a little bit about the reasons why at the very end. So you can stick around for that. But let's look at, let's look at, first let's talk about the quality of this book. As we open this book, look at this <laughs> striking image. Now this book and this cover too, this is a f incredible foil stamped hardcover book with a bookmark ribbon, um, just really sturdy. And uh, you'll see as you go through on these coded pages, this is like a, you know, uh, a fifth edition or other D&D &D or other high budget fantasy book. Um, and here we go by Ninth Level Games, Chris O'Neill. And in many ways, you can feel, and there actually is, a love letter to Return to Dark Tower, which is the board game this is based on later in this book. So what's going on here with Return to Dark Tower and what makes it different from something like Mazes is that this game is all about a final standoff with an epic boss at the end. So you're essentially playing the end of a campaign in a mini campaign. You are starting off as epic level characters going through what in old school D&D &D would be called ep uh, domain or yeah, domain level play. You can be controlling full armies. You are fighting off against this adversary leading to a final showdown where your epic characters will face off against this adversary and maybe win, maybe not. So, um, you know, the book is filled with these uh, illustrations and tells you a little bit about what fantasy role-playing games are, rulings over rules, some of these ideas that if you are not common with or not familiar with role-playing games, these will be handy. Uh, talks about if you want to use other OSR resources and what you actually need to play. Then it goes into talk about the game world, and you can see that this is uh, reminiscent of a game board here. So it really plays on this four kingdoms that's in the board game. Now I've never played the board game, so I'm coming at it from that perspective. But it does you you know you could take this easily and create a interesting world off of it, and it does in fact come with a beautiful full color map. So. Uh, again, you're just getting a ton of value from this book. Uh, it talks about doing a session zero, and that is where you will collaboratively set up and talk about your adversary and how your heroes relate to your adversary. So you're doing some collaborative storytelling here as you are creating this campaign. Talks about the core mechanics. I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, I encourage you to look at mazes to understand the basic rules of it. Um, and again, the, the cool thing about the mazes system is that it's, it's highly accessible. So you are always resolving challenges. You're hitting, trying to look for these dice rolls as success. And based on your character, you're only rolling one polygon dice so it might be a d4 d6 d8 d10 uh, and then based on your roll you're either succeeding or failing it's a really elegant system again look at the mazes flip through for more details but what this is providing is a polish to everything in mazes it also talks about doing actions at scale so again there is this um you know, idea that you are playing on this huge epic battleground 
and you are zooming into perhaps there is a adventure where you are starting off doing a dungeon crawl but then at the end you may have a moment where you are doing something at huge scale where you are sending an army to uh you know protect a certain mountain pass or something like that here's the player resources it talks about the different resources that players have so there is sort of um a lot of the normal things in a fantasy rpg are abstracted out into resources such as treasure uh, and that allows it again to be a simpler system you're not spending time uh, on shopping trips you're diving right into the action and this does have spirits so if, you know something of a mana system there is a corruption system treasure and then danger uh, which is again and I, I think the other thing that's kind of cool here that's going on is these the it, it, it has sort of reinvented the character sheet a little bit here as well so if you look at you know this character sheet for heroes there is an adversary one as well this character sheet is very different than most character sheets that I think you would see for you know a role-playing game uh, but I think it's very simple and that makes it pretty accessible I think to most people uh, at least in terms of interactivity. Uh, you know, there may be, it, it may be not providing you a lot of information about what these various things maybe relate to, but in terms of interacting with this space and uh, using it in play, very simple. And pretty too, you know, the colors are used very effectively. <clears throat> There are different sort of corruptions and bonds, and then we get into making characters here. And again, it talks about that player sheet, using that as your guide, the different roles. This is, again, uh, all in mazes, but it's packaged and presented here. It's given the high production quality treatment. And when that really shows off is when you get to the classes you also have companions in this game so before we get to classes you also have companions and this is really important in this high epic level campaign because there may be instances where your main character is occupied or on some you know other adventure or maybe you just want to send your companion on to do some other task um, uh, because at this level of play there's going to be a lot of moving parts. So having a companion is sort of an extension, a role-playing extension, and a gameplay extension. Goes on to talk about all the different areas in a little bit more detail with these zoomed-in full-color maps on these glossy pages. Helps you understand your relationship to the advers adversary. Talk about that. Again, giving you a bit of that character sheet. And here we go on to classes. And uh, this, I think, is really the most exciting part of the book. The classes that were pretty, uh, that I thought had a ton of flavor, but didn't have um, any graphical representation or illustration in the original Mazes book are given that full illustration here. And to great effect, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of classes in this game and uh, all these illustrations I think really bring you into want, wanting to play this game uh, and these all have the feel I think of an epic level character you know the silence by master the haunted recluse these are these are characters who are at the the end of their adventuring days have gained a ton of power, the lightning arbaluster, and are ready to use it against an adversary, a worthy adversary in a final battle. Spiderweb assassin, orphan scion, like, and I just am really, um, just really taken by all these character illustrations. You could use these, I think, as inspirations to build characters, you know, hopefully within mazes or within the system, but even outside of this. Definitely inspiring. Look at the attitude on that one. 
It's great. <clears throat> and here's here are some ideas of companions. They don't have to be, you know, uh, people necessarily. Could be a magical animal. Uh, different edges. These are similar to feats or uh, action abilities. Again, interspersed with wonderful full color art. Talks a little bit about magic. Again, I'm not going to go too much into detail here. Game session. Now, this is uh, uses a clock system, creating a clear time mechanic that will lead you to a final battle. And the good thing about having this sort of clock here, sorry, the, these high gloss pages, the glare is a little bright sometimes. The other thing that's nice about having this clock here is it gives you another mechanic to play with and another reward to either give the characters, like they could perhaps slow down the march of time or perhaps speed it up if they had a terrible failure. <clears throat> and then the adversary sheet. The, the adversary has, has its own mechanics that the uh, game master will control. They will control the adversary, but the players are also given a little bit of uh, help in providing flavor to that. And there are different seals that can be broken. There's a, another clock here for darkness. And when the dark, the darkness is another mechanic that is within mazes. So mazes has a couple layered mechanics that play off of each other. When this clock gets full, these seals are broken and those seals have different negative effects on the other, you know, on the full campaign. Gives you some ideas of adversaries as well. This gives you some ideas of possible You know, possible adversaries, possible epic level fights. And it gives you ideas of these seals. Like, this is a great example. The black mark. Put the black mark on one of the heroes. Assassins all over the world are now targeting them for death. So that darkness gets to a certain point. A seal is broken. You know, you can, I think that would be a great narrative and dramatic moment where all of a sudden these player has to deal with these you know, assassins. So again, it's like right epic level challenges coming at your uh, characters from the gaze eternal or the empress of shade, you know, epic level enemies, the lingering rot, even one that is a little bit more abstract that maybe is a little bit uh, mindless could be that final challenge. And it gives you some different smaller uh, villains to or s smaller challenges to fight against what those look like they're all pretty simple uh, all the monster stat blocks in the system are pretty straightforward and it does rely i think on the gm to make them give them more flavor using the details provided here and setting up interesting encounters but the encounters are going to be quick I would also say that the system, unlike D and D, it's it's made to run in two to three hour sessions. So, your games are are meant to last two to three sessions or two to three hours, and this campaign is designed. I think the clock here is ten, but you know, it could be done in probably eight to twelve sessions. So this book is a contained, you know, I guess you would say two times eight, sixteen to twenty hour campaign that it's expecting you or I think that you would get the most out of running this a little bit more talking about um, <clears throat> giving some tips and ending off with safety tools and an appendix again with this epilogue with this love letter the ode to dark tower and your character sheets so that's it that's return to dark tower uh, a hidden gem of a TTRPG. This was crowdfunded and uh, this has not gotten, I think, a lot of attention. I think there are a few things perhaps playing against it. One is that it is uh, tied to the mazes system. So if you haven't been exposed to the mazes system, that probably creates a barrier for you. Uh, um, <clears throat> but this is a you know, self-contained on its own book by itself. 
The other thing that might be playing against it is the Return to Dark Tower might not be a brand that maybe a lot of people are familiar with. When there's a lot of other options out there in the dark fantasy world, I think it's hard for people to, without a relationship to Dark Tower to understand what is unique about it. I think you can understand that you're dealing with, you know, high fantasy here, looking at these characters. But it's a little hard, I think, to differentiate, you know, the type of experience you would have here with um, perhaps with, you know, a more popular fantasy role playing game. But I think, you know, the thing again, the thing that stands out here is this is giving you a player to zoom up, zoom to that high level, epic level play. Uh, I think this would be a really fun experience for someone, for a gaming group to have, you know, say, hey, for the next two months, let's try something a little bit different. Let's play Return to Dark Tower. Let's do this epic campaign. There's we're going to end in uh, eight sessions. There's going to be a massive final battle at the end. How does that sound to everyone? There's some really cool characters in here. So I think that, you know, if you um, were able to pitch it that way, you could get your group on board with doing a quick epic level uh, mini campaign and telling these stories of your fight against this adversary in the world of Return to Dark Tower. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. If you like what I'm doing here, please like and subscribe, share with your friends. This is all part of Tabletop Bookshelf, which is an independent online bookstore dedicated to tabletop role-playing games. We carry a lot of TTRPG books, some solo games, some crowdfunded projects. We try to bring it to as wide an audience as possible and enrich the TTRPG place for creators and for players. Uh, and if you like what I'm doing here, check out the shop. We've got this and new stuff in all the time.